the last letter that I shall read is uh, from David Moulton. Uh, David has known uh, Neil for a number of years. Uh, Dave writes, uh, he's, he's got a great bio on the internet as well uh, uh, for Neil. And uh, he has on TV technology, if you uh, Google TV technology, Dave Moulton, a bunch of stuff comes up. Uh, further stories, much lengthier than this, uh, that include uh, stories of Neil. Back in the uh, 1980s, Dave says, I was a state employee of the mediocre kind, having just moved up to the esteemed position of state college uh, faculty from owning my own dinky little demo recording studio. I hadn't had anybody push me towards excellence since graduate school. Uh, I was way more than satisfied with the first uh, easy, cheap answer to present itself in any given cause. But through the agency of dumb luck, while teaching at the State University of New York in Fredonia, one summer I found myself on a national public radio teaching staff with a rather remarkable group of audio professionals, the most notable of whom was Neil Muncy. Uh, I quickly discovered that Neil was uh, an audio god, says uh, Dave, an intensely, uh, immensely skilled recordist with some tremendous credits, a uh, console designer from days before Neve, an audio theorist and acoustician, uh, Neil's specialty for these NPR music recording shops. In addition to teaching about consoles, electronics, grounding, and signal flow was acoustics and critical listening. Sometimes I think the rest of us taught at the workshops just to be near Neil. Suffice to say, Neil was way beyond my pay grade. Nonetheless, Neil kindly introduced me to a serious and rigorous consideration of the audio, audible implications of stereo, stereophony, stereo, stereophony, there you go, and the, uh, the loudspeaker behavior in reverberant spaces. For the very first time, he introduced me to a, a more critical and considered evaluation of how and what people heard when they listened to music coming out of their loudspeakers. Neil himself listened very carefully and thought very carefully about what he heard. He created some remarkable temporal, uh, temporary listening uh, rooms at Fredonia that were extremely effective and taught us all uh, how to hear the benefits of their virtues. And a first for me, he says, uh, how to hear the physical goodness and badness that exist in audio recordings using the benefits of those temporary listening rooms for fun and profit. Over the next decade, with Neil leading our pedagogical efforts, we taught NPR engineers and producers from all over the country how to listen and how to hear to an immense uh, subsequent public benefit. Uh, as a function of all that, Dave says, I learned a huge amount about how to hear, how loudspeakers work, how rooms work acoustically, and why music and audio are so important. That work has become my professional life. All my publications, which I was mentioning, um, my loudspeaker work, he says, and my audio productions. Without Neil, I don't really think it would have happened. Neil was my mentor for audio. He was also my mentor for excellence. He gave me the inspiration to try for something better than what I knew I could do easily. He taught me to reach out for the stars. About excellence, <laughs> remembering Neil Muncy. What Neil really did for us, I think, has uh, to do with excellence. Excellent pertains to perform, uh, obtaining performance and products uh, for the highest and finest quality. Neil was never satisfied with less. He both drove and inspired us, his colleagues, to always reach for such excellence. He was uh, wonderfully lucid and uh, occasionally very funny in his calls for excellence. It was never an angry, angry rant about deficiencies, but rather 
and expressed amazement and wonder at the lengths we needed to and could go to to obtain those excellent outcomes. Thanks, Neil, he says.